Hello there, Dev Central community. This is Jason Rahm, and I got a question from a customer about the Python SDK working with the Django uh, Python web framework. And I've never done anything with Django, but I, I do mess with the Python Flask micro framework quite a bit. And so I built out a demo app uh, to kind of highlight how the, the SDK works within a, a web app. Uh, environment and so caveats here are that I do not do the credential system correctly nor am I protecting the traffic between my desktop and my uh, virtual big IP on my desktop in SSL that I will leave to you if you decide to build a web app to do it properly uh, but this is really to highlight the the SDK and so Let's, let's take a look at the app and then we'll, we'll look a little bit at the code. So I have this, this F5 demo homepage uh, with a big green connect to the big IP button. It takes me to a web form and I can put in my credentials and I'm going to connect to that big IP and I get a little notification here that I have connected. And so I can click, I only have two parts of the big IP that, that I built into this web app and that's uh, pools and uh, and I rules and and so if I come over to pools then I get a listing of the six pools that are on this particular virtual big IP and uh, let me click into the test pool and it will demonstrate back to me I've got the load balancing method is round robin and the monitors that I have established is just the uh, the canned HTTP monitor and then my members list is here and I, I could have built it to where uh, these were all linked and I could click into the particular member in return uh, particulars about those uh, individual members but I, I didn't build it out that far and then so I'm gonna go back to pools get my list again then I can come over to I, the, the iRules listing and we can do a couple different things here I actually built this one out a little further than I did pools and that we can actually uh, we can manipulate these. So if I click into this random pool, I can add a comment in here. This is a comment. I go ahead and update that rule. And so it tells me that the rule is updated. So if I click this again, it's actually going to go grab it again. It's not it's not storing a, a local cache. So this should be fresh. And you see that my uh, my comment is added there. So we go back to the rules listing. And other than just editing the rules, I can also add a rule. So my new rule in the part in the common partition, I could have uh, specified or allowed you to update the, the partition there, uh, but it's just uh, it, it's displaying it as common. And and then uh, so I'll put a simple I rule in here that does nothing. So uh, priority is actually one of the uh, very few commands. I think there's four, maybe five, that don't have to happen within an, an event structure. And so I can just put a single line I rule in there, create the rule, and boom, it was created. I scroll down here, it should be in the list, uh, which it is, and and there's my rules. I, I didn't actually build a delete rule, but that would have been nice. Uh, we could flesh that out at some point if, if somebody really wanted to pursue this. Uh, but let's take a look at the code. And the Flask app is, is fairly simple. You've got, I've got a couple helper files here uh, where the forms are defined. So I've got the device form and the, the editor form. In the editor form for the, for the iRule, I'm actually using this uh, code mirror uh, widget um, to, to provide uh, syntax highlighting and, and some other editor functions that you saw the, the um, line numbers. And, and there's a lot of other options that you could enable. Uh, I just put line numbers to true to, to show a, a simple, in fact, let me go back here. Uh, you can see the line numbers that are no longer I rules. So, okay, you see you in the gutter here, you've got all the line numbers. You can also enable uh, code folding and all the wonderful editor type things. Uh, but I just put line numbers in, in that config. So that's your forms. And, and then uh, in your config, this is where you uh, set your, uh, your secret key uh, super secret demo key right here, uh, plain text for the win. Uh, and so in, any app that you, you set up in the Flask environment, you would have your own key. Obviously, if you're using a place like GitHub, you would not sync your uh, config.py uh, file to 
the web, but since this is a demo app, I did. Um, and then the code mirror options are in here. And if you use a, a database for something like this with uh, MySQL, you definitely would want to sync your uh, your SQL credentials up to the uh, GitHub. So you have to be really careful about what kind of config file type information that you want to send. So in Flask, you, you can pull that in. And so if we come over here and look at the app, uh, this is where the line where you can pull those config things in. So you, you would not add your config file to uh, to GitHub, but um, you can pull that, that in. So depending on what environment you're in, you just uh, pull that information in. So this is where you're instantiating your code mirror uh, widget against the app. And then down here, you just have a bunch of routes. So the home page, we're just rendering a static, a static template. And so in the templates, we have, we'll, we'll take a look at the templates here in a minute. Uh, but let's, let's take a look at what you really wanted to see, which is the, uh, how, how you're using the SDK in here. And so at the top, we're, we're just in, importing uh, management root from uh, the SDK. And then when we do the connect, we're taking the, uh, we're taking the credentials that we submitted and we're storing those as uh, session variables. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, instantiate the big IP. Um, and then anytime you, you go out to pools, then you're just going to do a, uh, a call out to the collection, uh, the pool collection. And, and so if you're using a tool like Postman, that is doing a get against uh, the, the, the same TMSH uh, you know, uh, list LTM pool, right? And so uh, that's wrapped in the iControl rest of slash management slash TM slash LTM slash pool and so in the SDK, we wrap that in, into a, a get collection method. And then once we get that returned, we will then take the host name of the big IP so we could just display when you're on the pool, which actual host name you're on. And then we take that pools object and we return that uh, uh, through the template. And so if we go look at the, the pools template, this is just a, uh, the way that the the templating language works it uses Jinja 2 and so there's a base layout page where you can put in your your uh, HTML uh, base details for your CSS and JavaScript and, and and all that other stuff and then setting up your body and in, in this case the nav bar that we had up here uh, with uh, you know up here the F5 demo the pools and the rules uh, that's a little helper file that I've created and you just you just pull that in and so it just kind of builds out your HTML uh, file uh, but the, the meat of what you want is, is you're, you're passing that pools to the template and so in it's uh, very Pythonic in the way that you build out this uh, this page and so it's a small small amount of code and then you let your your commands do most of the work for you so uh, you loop through the pools and you create a list item and then you're just uh, e extrapolating these these variables into um, into html code and so that is uh, the pools if we go over to rules where we actually did oh, let me go back to the app if we come back to rules then we are getting that collection very similar in fact the, this route rules and pools are very similar um, few lines of code and, and you're done. For the add rule, that is uh, a little bit different in that we, we need to display the form, we need to populate the form uh, with the, uh, actually that's more the edit rule, sorry. Um, we want to populate the form with what we have and so we, we um, take that information from the call to the SDK, here's that call, we're gonna load that rule. And um, let, me, let me start over here at the top of, just so you can see the flow of, of how the route works. Uh, when, when I click on the rule and I, and I pass it to edit rule and string name, it's gonna pass that rule in. And that rule I'm gonna split from, you know, slash common slash, you know, my test rule or whatever. And I'm gonna split that on the, the tilde mark uh, into the partition and the name 
And so when I call that out, I'm calling, I'm loading that rule uh, against the partition and name. And then I instantiate my form. And then I load that form with the data from the SDK. And, and, then, and then I render that template. So if it's a post and not a get, then I actually come in here and I pull that data out of the form as it returns from the uh, from the browser, and then I will do a load of the existing rule, and then I update the I rule body and uh, the attribute of that against the uh, the Python SDK object, which which is this R one, and then I just uh, click an update um, on that method and then a redirect back to the rule list. So um, that's the edit rule. For the add rule, it's very simple, uh, very similar to the, the edit rule, except I don't need to load anything previously. I just need to display the form. You create uh, the, the name. It will go out and look to see if that name exists, and it calls the, um, the, um, the SDK. Uh, it uses that exists method, and it'll go out there and, and check. And if it does not exist, it'll go ahead and create that rule. If it does, uh, it'll flash you back a message saying, "Hey, that exists. Uh, you know, we're we're done here." So anyway, that's that's kind of the 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 gist of of how the the Python SDK uh, can integrate flawlessly into a web app environment. And thank you for joining me. And I hope this has been helpful. We'll see you guys out there in the community.